Hi, my name is Andy Kolar. I uh, teach at Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut, and today I will be going over the timpani excerpt for CMEA Allstates, uh, which this year is William Schumann Circus Overture. So the first thing I wanted to mention is that I think there is tremendous value in studying the original full score for any sort of excerpt that you're looking at. There are a lot of pieces of information that you can get from a full score that you may not be able to get when you were just looking at the excerpt uh, alone. Um, getting something like this, which is a study score, uh, which is relatively cheap, is just a miniaturized version of the full orchestra score. Uh, this is a huge help because you can see what other instruments you are playing with, you can see what other instruments you could use as a pitch reference if you are playing this piece with a live group. Uh, I highly uh, recommend doing so. So this piece is um, Circus Overture. It is meant to depict a circus. And so there's even a footnote in the beginning of the piece that says, this introductory material must be treated as in a grandiose manner. It should clearly simulate a circus barker attempting to assemble a crowd for a sideshow. So what they're referencing is that loud roll that is at uh, measure one and also at measure 27. So one thing that can help to set that apart is to add a little bit of an accent at the beginning and at the end of both of those rolls. There is an accent written at the end of the second roll at measure 27, but I would recommend doing it at the beginning and end of both of, of those rolls. So the next couple things I want to mention are things that are in the original score that are not written in this uh, version, which I think uh, can, can help to change the performance uh, of what you do. So at measure six and measure seven, there are some articulations that are missing from this version that are in the original uh, score. So I would, uh, I would add these in. So at measure six, your first note should have an accent, second note should have a staccato. The next measure, the first note should have an accent, second note should have a staccato, and the third note should again have an accent. Uh, the next is at measure nine. Again, there are some articulations missing from measure nine and measure 10. So the first note at measure nine should have an accent. The next two notes should have a staccato. Next note should have an accent. And the last two notes of that measure should have a staccato as well. At measure 10, the first note should have an accent and all the rest should have staccato. Uh, I think it is very important to add those in because it very much changes how you would play these parts. And so I wanted to play the, uh, this part of the piece so that you could get a chance to hear what it sounds like. You are playing here with the brass, so we want big, dark brass section uh, sounds. Uh, so pay uh, attention to the accents that you hear. This will start from the beginning through uh, measure 11. So again, it very much changes the inflection of the part to add those articulations and accents, so I would uh, really recommend doing that. So uh, the next thing is the, the meat of the piece, which is at measure 32. So the eighth note part is uh, relatively straightforward for what sticking uh, you could do, um, that where you keep you know, uh, your, your left hand on the A flat, um, and your right hand could move back and forth from the D and the F. But the triplets is where you just need to make a decision. It ultimately doesn't matter what sticking you choose, you just need to make sure that you can get clean triplets out of this uh, the entire time. So the first thing you could do is alternate. For the second measure, that would look like this. Now, generally speaking, if you all have an alternating sticking, that can help the part to sound a little more open, which is good. But this might be a little bit quick, so I think that that might be problematic, especially for the fourth measure where you have two triplets in a row. So uh, when I play this, I will do that second measure. I will do that alternating, but I'm going to change this sticking that I do at the fourth measure at measure 35. One option would uh, be to do some crossovers. 
again, because of the speed, I think that might be a little problematic. So what I'm going to do is use uh, doubles on these triplets. I'm going to use two lefts from the 29 and 26, then two rights on the 23, and then again, two lefts to finish out that, the measure. So that only works if you can get clean triplets uh, out, out of that section. If you can't get good sounding triplets, I would recommend finding another sticking that, that will work for you. But it is most important that you can get the triplets clean uh, every single time you have that. The uh, next thing I'll mention is at measure 43, you have the, the dynamic comes down a little bit. And I think it's important to know why. It's because the woodwinds enter at 43. So the previous three measures, 40, 41, and 42, we need to decrescendo so that we uh, can make sure that we are not overpowering the woodwinds. There's also another percussion that's, that's playing with the timpani, and so we have to make sure that we don't overshadow that. The next thing you see in your part at measure 52 is a crescendo, which is where the woodwinds and strings are just holding whole notes. So the timpani and percussion can really start to grow and take over that section again uh, for those last two measures. Last thing I'll mention is to make sure you mute uh, at the very end to make sure that you get everything covered. So the next thing I want to go over is the tuning scheme that I think would be uh, helpful for, for you as you're figuring out how to play this. So the, I would use an F as your starting note, your reference pitch. I would have that be an F either on a pitch pipe or a tuning fork or something. But I would start with that on your bottom drum. So my, fir my four pitches at the beginning of the piece are F, then C, then E flat, then F on the top drum. So I'd start with that F first. From there, that you want to go up a fifth to get to the C. Ba, da, 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 da. Then from there, you I would go up to the 23 inch drum where you get your octave F. So you will have F, C, F. Which is a little bit flat. Um, that would be the first three notes that I would do. From there, I would then do the E flat last. It's up to you if you want to go from the, if you are can hear the major second from an F to an E flat, or if you'd rather do the minor third from the C to the E flat. For me, I think it's a little bit easier to hear the C to E flat, so I'm thinking a minor third there. Da 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 da. If you think about that tune, that's a minor third interval that sometimes can be helpful. So again, low F, C, high F, then the E flat to fill, fill that in. Uh, next, I have a couple tuning changes in here that I, that I think are worth bringing up. Uh, the first one is at measure 11. I'm gonna have this C go down to an A. So again, if you think of that minor third interval, that's the interval you wanna think of. So that's a minor third there. At that same time, I would also have this E flat go down to a D. So that is a half step. So think Jaws. Ba, da, da, da. Even though Jaws go, you know, goes backwards, you can kind of think about it you know, backwards in your head to, to figure out where that is. So E flat down to the D. You then play the, at measure 27, the roll on the A. After that roll is where I would move this A down to an A flat, which again is a half step, so you can think about the Jaws theme for, for that interval change. Uh, once you, uh, you then start into the part uh, for, for the rest of the excerpt, if you the drums you're playing on have a mute, I would recommend putting that on the low drum since you won't be using it. But if they don't have a mute, that's not a problem, but if they have one, I would recommend doing it. It's just one less thing you have to worry about at the very end. Uh, and again, make sure at the very end you uh, mute all the drums as quickly as possible uh, to make sure you have a nice, clean ending. So uh, now I'm going to play through the entire excerpt so you can get a feel for what this sounds like.
So thank you very much for joining me and good luck at your audition.